Welcome to this free CCNA Packet Tracer practice lab. You can download the lab file from the link in the description. If you like these labs, please consider supporting me via my Patreon or the cryptocurrency options in the description. This lab will be similar to the previous lab in which we use Telnet to connect to a switch and router. In this lab, however, we will use the more secure option, SSH, which stands for Secure Shell. SSH is more secure because it encrypts packets between the devices, so that even if the packets are intercepted by an attacker, they can't be read. There are a few extra steps involved in configuring SSH, but it's not so complicated. The four requirements are, first, you must use the hostname command to configure the hostname of the device. To reinforce this, I haven't pre-configured the hostnames of the devices for this lab. Second, you must configure the DNS domain name using the IP domain name command. Third, you must generate the SSH key to be used to encrypt the packets. And fourth, SSH must be enabled on the VTY lines. We will go through these steps and a couple others in this lab. Try to complete the lab yourself first, then continue watching this video if you have trouble, or watch it after to check your solution. If you haven't learned the commands necessary to complete the tasks yet in your studies, feel free to watch this video to learn them. Step 1 is to configure the host names of Switch1 and R1. This is a requirement for SSH, so let's do that now. On Switch1 first. Enable conf t hostname Switch1. Now on R1. Enable, conf t, hostname r1. There we go. Step 2 is to configure the IP addresses indicated. This is the same as in the previous lab. I'll start on r1 first since we're already here. Interface G00, IP address 192.168.1.1.255.255.255.0. No shutdown, because the interface is disabled by default. Now let's configure Switch 1's VLAN 1 interface. Interface VLAN 1, IP address 192.168.1.2, 255.255.255.0. No shutdown. That's all for step 2. Step 3 is to configure a single user account on each device which we will use to log in to the device when we SSH from PC1. On Switch1 first, exit, username Cisco, password CCNA. I've said it many times before, but remember, passwords are case sensitive. Now on R1, exit, username Cisco, password CCNA. That's all for step three. Step four is to configure a DNS domain name on each device. This is an, another required step for configuring SSH, and we will use a domain name of cisco.com for this lab. This only requires one command, here on R1 first. IP domain name cisco.com. That's it. Now on switch one. IP, domain name, cisco.com. That's all for step four. Step five is to generate the keys used to encrypt the packets. This is done with this command. Crypto key generate RSA. Now we are asked for the modulus size, the length of the keys used for the encryption and decryption process. We're instructed to use 1024. There we go. Now let's do the same on R1. Crypto key generate RSA. 1024. That's all for step five. Step six is now to configure the VTY lines. There are a few requirements and let's configure them one by one. On R1 first, line VTY 015. 
Again, meaning line 0 through 15. Login local. That's the same command used last time, meaning we will have to use the user account we created previously to log into the VTY lines when we connect. Transport input. Last time we used telnet, now we'll enter SSH. This will allow only SSH, not telnet, to be used to connect to the VTY lines. The third requirement for this lab is to terminate connections after five minutes of inactivity. This is an important security measure. It is done with this command. Exec timeout. Now I'll use the question mark. Anytime you have to input some amount of time, check the unit of time used for the commands. You don't want to enter five for five minutes if it ends up being five seconds. In this case, we can see it is entered in minutes, so I'll just enter five. Always remember that for commands involving time. Now I'll quickly hop on switch one and enter the same commands. Line VTY 015, login local, transport input SSH, exec timeout five. That's all for step six. Step seven is to enable SSH version two. Version two improves on weaknesses of version one. If you want to learn more about this sort of thing, I recommend pursuing Cisco's security certification path, where you will learn all about this sort of thing. For now, just remember that you should use SSH version two whenever possible. You can enable it with this command. Exit, IP SSH version two. That's it. Now we'll do it on R1. Exit. IP SSH version 2. That's it. Finally, let's see if we can connect to the command line of each device from PC1 by using SSH. First, let's see if Telnet works. I'll try to Telnet to switch 1. Telnet 192.168.1.2. As you can see, it doesn't work. This is because of that transport input SSH command we used before. Now let's try SSH. That is done with this command. SSH hyphen L Cisco, Cisco being the username we are connecting with, which we configured on switch one and R1, followed by the IP address, 192.168.1.2. I'll enter the password of CCNA in all caps, and there we go. We're on switch one. Now I'll type exit and try R1. SSH hyphen L Cisco 192.168.1.1 Password of CCNA. And now we're on R1. Take note of the difference between the command used to Telnet and the command used to SSH onto the switches and routers. These are the standard commands used on Windows. Anyway. That's all for this lab. Thank you for watching. I hope this lab and video have been helpful for you. Please subscribe for future labs like this, which will be released weekly. If you have requests for any specific labs, let me know in the comment section. If you want to support my channel, please consider contributing to my Patreon, patreon.com slash Jeremy's IT Lab. I accept Bitcoin and Ethereum donations via the addresses in the description. I am also a Brave Verified Publisher and accept BAT or Basic Attention Token donations in the Brave browser.